For the past couple of hours, we've been getting testimony from Robert Hur. It is a congressional hearing where they're asking him about why Joe Biden was not criminally charged for retaining classified documents, for sharing information from classified documents, for stating to his ghostwriter, this may be classified, be careful, and why the ghostwriter himself was not charged for destroying evidence that Joe Biden knew and willfully retained government classified documents. This is an absolutely fascinating uh, story. Those that are familiar, just over a month ago, we got this report that Joe Biden was a doddering old man. And because of this, <laughs> we can't criminally charge him. As vice president, Joe Biden, uh, Joe Biden left office retaining in numerous locations. I think it's like five or six locations. Lots and lots of national security related classified documents. They were not secured properly. As I already mentioned, members of Congress have asked Robert Hur, the special counsel, why it is that he was not criminally charged. Robert, Hur, of course, says that Mr. Biden, President Biden, is a well-to-do, well-meaning old man with a bad memory. And there's no way that you can prove intent. Here's where it gets interesting. I think the Republican members of Congress have easily laid out how you can easily prove intent, like perhaps when, according to the report, Joe Biden said these may be classified, be careful, knowing that he had classified information, that he was sharing it with someone who does not have security clearance. That is a crime, not it's not a crime for re retaining documents, but you have to wonder why it is not being charged. Now, here's the best part. Democrats are making a different argument. Nadler, of course, jumped out and said, in your investigation, you found insufficient evidence that Joe Biden committed a crime. And Robert Hur says, yes, which is insane and just plumb not true, but it makes you wonder. Adam Schiff joins the fray and says, you are a registered Republican and you added to your report that Biden had memory problems, which you did not need to add for partisan reasons, because you are doing everything in your power to get Donald Trump elected. Now, of course, many of us are probably uh, making the, the assumption, especially those who watch a show like this, that Robert Hur, though he may be a registered Republican, is operating under a Democrat DOJ and will not bring charges against Democrats because it is the uniparty establishment and it's a two tiered form of justice. I believe that's the more likely outcome, though Robert Hur is a Republican. Republicans play this game all the time. I must be honorable. I could never do what the Democrats do. So Joe Biden will not be charged. But let's be real. When you listen to this, I mean, Matt Gates's testimony or uh, not his testimony, but his questions to Robert Hur, Robert Hur's testimony was absolutely fascinating. Let's just make it simple. Matt and many others go through all the different locations where Joe Biden retained unlawfully. And this is a fact that is unlawful classified documents. Matt Gates says he doesn't think Biden or Trump should have been charged. What I find fascinating in this in this trial or, or trial, but in this hearing that you actually have this this. Well, I'll, I'll leave it to what Matt, what Matt Gates just said. How is it that either of them are being charged for this? But uh, what I what I think is truly fascinating is that the document from Robert Hur, the report actually plays this compare and contrast game. And I'm getting frustrated listening to this because I'm like, look, we get it. Joe Biden broke the law charge him or don't, whatever. But why is this hearing half about whether or not Trump was better or worse? They say, well, well, you think about Joe Biden, why we're not charging him is because unlike Trump. And I'm like, well, what do you mean? Unlike Trump? I don't care. OK, you leave Trump over there in the other room. Tell me right now. OK, here's what Robert Hur said. Robert Hur says that let me pull up this story here for you. Shocking memory lapses. He had no idea what was going on. Joe Biden showed himself to be completely out of it. In fact, I, I think I have the uh, the X post up here somewhere. That uh, is that. No, that's a Boeing thing. Well, where where are we at? Here we go. Dylan Houseman on Twitter. Joe Biden literally said my Corvette go burr while Robert Hur pleaded with him to answer actual questions. Once here, here's what the tweet says. It's a screen grab from a news report. I believe from the official report. Once it was while lamenting that he could drive his vintage Chevrolet Corvette only the length of his driveway. The other time was during a lengthy exchange over the torque of electric vehicles. 
Quote, by the way, you know how it works? Biden asks her. It's really cool. Her remark, sir, I'd love to. I would love to hear much more about this, but I do have a few more questions to get through. Biden, you step your foot on the accelerator all the way down until it gets about six, seven grand. Then all of a sudden it will say launch. All you do is take your foot off the brake. The transcript then indicates, quote, makes car sound as well as laughter. It's on my bucket list, her responded before turning to questions regarding classified documents that had been discovered at the Penn Biden Center. So as of as of the uh, live stream we are doing here, the hearing is still ongoing. And what we have from the post millennial Biden transcript of classified documents interview reveals shocking memory lapses, said he had no GD idea in response to hundreds of questions. Here's what's fascinating. Joe Biden is clearly filibustering when he's being asked these questions. He's clearly trying to deflect. When he's saying, I have no idea, he is not actually saying he doesn't know. He's avoiding incriminating testimony. You know, look, let's say you, uh, you're a guy and you rob a liquor store and the cops come to you and they, they you know, get you and you're forced to testify. Where were you on this night? I don't remember. Who are you with? Mm, can't recall. Because that's the only way you get past it. They can't, they can't argue you do recall. Maybe we'll get to the point in the future where we can put like a, a, an electroencephalogram that will monitor your brain waves, and they'll be like, no, his recollection centers are lighting up. He's lying. But that's the real reason Joe Biden's saying he can't remember. Not because he's a doddering old fool, but because he knows he broke the law. Now, here's where it gets interesting. Listening to the Democrats' statements about what the real motivations of Robert Hur actually are, and I'm like, maybe? Seriously. He's a Republican. Now, I don't think Joe Biden should be criminally charged or impeached. I think maybe two, three years ago, but I don't think so right now because we're what? Nine months, not even nine months away from uh, not even nine months, eight months from the uh, election. The American people will decide. And Trump is very much ahead right now. If Joe Biden is to be criminally charged and that removes him from the presidential race. I mean, Democrats might actually prefer that. It allows them to bring in anyone else. Impeaching and convicting Joe Biden would also have that effect. Now, it's possible Republicans move for an impeachment maybe uh, later on in the year, knowing that a conviction couldn't happen before the election. So instead of him being removed, they'll still have to run Joe Biden. Perhaps that's the strategy. But I got to be honest. I mean, when the Democrats are arguing that Robert Herr didn't want to charge Joe Biden, but ins insisted on calling him a, a, a doddering old fool. I'm being, paraphrasing. I mean, it makes sense. If you were strategically trying to damage Joe Biden, what's a criminal charge pertaining to classified documents from several years ago going to accomplish? Nothing. If he's convicted, it might make him look like the victim. But like Democrats are going to be like, oh, the Republicans are going after him, blah, blah, blah. But you say, no, no, we're not going to charge him because he's senile. Now you really, really hurt his chances. And what would happen if he got criminally charged over something he did as vice president? The argument would be this wasn't even as president and it was an accident or something like that. The fascinating thing in this story is that Joe Biden told his ghostwriter explicitly, this may be classified, shared. I mean, this all of this is so, is so criminal. Well, let's read this report from the Post Millennial. The testimony is currently ongoing. And uh, this is this is actually really fascinating hearing from uh, this is Mr. Biggs. One of the more fascinating things was uh, uh, it was Hank Johnson from Georgia, a Demo uh, I believe he's a Democrat, and it would make sense. And he said that uh, Robert Hur is trying as hard as possible to smear and defame Joe Biden so that Trump will appoint him when Trump inevitably wins because of the assistance that he's, he's being given. I find it fascinating, to be completely honest. But uh that's the Democrats argument. Adam Schiff said you could have in, I'll paraphrase. You could have included in your report that based on uh, Joe Biden's state of mind, we found no in uh, we could not we, we did not believe we could prove intent. Now, what's fascinating is a lot of lawyers have posted on X saying you don't need to prove intent to bring criminal charges. You need to uh, to uh, prove probable cause, a preponderance of evidence. Joe Biden did retain the documents. Joe Biden did transfer this information to uh, individuals with no clearance. 
he expressed to his ghostwriter he knew that he had them, that he'd found them, and that he had to be careful with them. All the elements are there. Leave it for a jury. So I wonder. I don't I don't know that Robert Hur actually is playing any political games because if he really thought that Joe Biden would not be found guilty and he really thought that uh, he wanted to hurt Joe Biden or he was really aiming to hurt Joe Biden, criminally charging him would be the best move because it would put Joe Biden on the stand. Joe Biden would then have to testify. And I think the jury may actually conclude that Joe Biden, his brain is rotten. And so you can't really find him guilty. I mean, he did it. We know he did it. But where he is right now, are we really going to be served by locking this guy up? That being said, perhaps it could initiate a 25th Amendment hearing, which could ultimately remove Joe Biden from the presidency. So perhaps that's why Robert Hurd didn't want to bring uh, bring about that issue. The Post Millennial reports the transcripts of the interview of President Joe Biden in the classified documents case over a span of two days have been released, showing the multiple memory lapses, including when his son Bo died, forgetting when Trump was elected and showing the president saying, I don't recall or I have no GD idea more than 100 times. And let's not forget the moment when Biden deflective to say my Corvette goes brr, and Robert Hur is like, yes, please, I, I need to ask you more questions. During her interview with Biden, the president, contrary to what, the, what he said in response to her bombshell report in a press conference, brought up the death of his son first. Quote, what month did Bo die? Biden asked himself out loud during the interview. The president recalled that May 30th was the day of Bo's death, but could not remember the year at the time. Was it 2015 he died? Biden asked. He then also had to be reminded of the year that President Donald Trump was elected after he first asked if Trump was elected in 2017 instead of the correct year, 2016. It's absolutely fascinating that this is where we're at. We have this uh, from the Daily Caller. Biden lied about Bo exchange with Robert Hur during angry press, con- press conference transcript confirms. The news report was that Joe Biden did not know when his son died. Biden comes out publicly and says, that's not what happened. I said, you, you have no right to ask me that question. And uh, the testimony reveals Joe Biden himself said, what year did he die? Hmm, I can't recall. And Robert was like, he doesn't even know when his son died. This is where we're currently at. We have this from Brett L. Tolman. Tolman is a executive director for Right on Crime, former U.S. attorney, says the her report is incredibly damning to both Joe Biden and the DOJ. For Biden, it exposes purposeful illegal retention and dissemination of classified materials, which contained information important to national security. For the DOJ, it exposes their hypocrisy and protection of one side. Well, here we go. Watch live. I suppose we can pull up some of the uh, uh, the testimony happening live right now, and that's why we are live. And so uh, let's see if we uh, we can are jump those to quotes. Correct. Here we go, Congresswoman. If you have particular page sites for those quotations, I'd be happy to confirm their page accuracy. Six. So we're jumping right, right now into the live the screen uh, hearing, and I don't know what uh, quotes. Here we go. With respect to the two quotes that are on the screen. Uh, in addition to this shortage of evidence, there are other innocent explanations for documents we cannot refute, and we can, we conclude the evidence is not sufficient to convict, and we decline to recommend prosecution. I was just going to get to that, and you concluded that, Those quote, the evidence is not sufficient to convict, and we decline to recommend prosecution, end quote. Those are your words in the report, correct? Those words appear in the report. Thank you. President Biden's counsel discovered a different set of documents at the Penn Biden Center and voluntarily turned them over to the FBI. Those documents contain national security information, but you determined that you could not, in fact, prove that President Biden willfully retained those documents because, quote, the evidence suggests that the marked classified documents found at the Penn Biden Center were sent and kept there by mistake. Therefore, we decline, we decline any criminal charges related to those documents, end quote, correct? The language, we decline any criminal charges related to those documents, does appear at page 311 of the report. Thank you. You also reached a similar conclusion regarding the documents found in President Biden's Senate papers at the University This guy is such a lawyer. Whenever he's asked a question, instead of saying yes, no, I agree or not, he goes, the report says yes. It's almost like he didn't write it. University of Delaware were there by mistake, correct? 
That language does appear at page 325 of the report. So it seems to me that the crux of the report, the main story, is that you found insufficient evidence to prove beyond a reasonable doubt that <laughs> President Biden willfully retained any classified materials. That is the story of this report. And I yield back, Mr. Fre uh, Mr. Chairman. The gentlelady yields back. The gentlelady from Indiana is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I just thank you, Special Counsel, for being here in these challenging times. And I want to tell you a few things that is interesting for me. Uh, you obviously could see that there is a motive, there is a legacy. You obviously see that it was a willful retention of these documents, but it's interesting for me that when you talk about sympathetic, well-meaning, uh, older man with poor, uh, elderly man with a poor memory, it seems like every you know, attorney would advise you to be sympathetic and be well-meaning, and it seems like the whole FBI needs to do, a, a, based on my hearings here, I need to do check on amnesia because everyone says doesn't recall. So it seems to me that it might have been something <laughs> way more in his recollection than a typical I don't recall because that's what ever seems like that's what I've learned it here. So is there something more than that? That just He's I not going to answer this question. For you to actually decide because it seems that this is the core of of the whole investigation, why didn't you pursue for, further the charges? Congresswoman, uh, my judgment um, as to how a jury would likely perceive and receive and consider evidence relating to, um, relating to all the evidence that would be put in both by both the government and the defense at trial, um, it was based on a number of different sources from documents including various recordings, some of them from the 2016-2017 blah, 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 blah. time frame. So another, another major factor in this testimony is that in the report, and Robert Hur has confirmed this, Joe Biden retained these documents intentionally to preserve and share his legacy with people who don't have access to classified information. That is fact. In the testimony, Robert Hur says, Joe Biden wanting to preserve his legacy sh retained this information. Now, that's, if that's not willful, I don't know what is to actually just comment on something, you know, Mr. Raskin mentioned about, you know, us not remembering, remembering communists. I actually grew up under communists, and I have a very good recollection what it is. And unfortunately, Tyrion's eye on the, on the rise, on the march, which he said, unfortunately, they've been emboldened by, you know, President Obama, now by President Biden, too. And unfortunately, our government and Department of Justice is really now resembles, you know, a tyrannical government. It's sad for me to see that. But I'm going in with a really double standard what we have there. But uh, I'm going to yield to Chairman Jordan the rest of my time. Thank the gentlelady for yielding. Uh, Mr. Hurd, during your one-year investigation, did you have communications with the White House and the White House Counsel in, in particular? Yes. I think you had, like, I, I got five letters that they, uh, in, in, and they communicated with you regarding your investigation. Is that accurate? We received a number of letters from uh, White House Counsel's office and as well as the President's personal counsel. Right, they're either special counsel or, or personal counsel. I see the, who signed the letters. And did the White House get the report before the report was made public? We did provide a draft of the report to the White House Counsel's office and members of the President's personal counsel team for their re review. No, I understand. And did the White House then, once they got the report before it went public, did the White House try to weigh in with with your investigation on elements of that report and frankly, get the report changed? They did request certain edits and changes to the draft report. Yeah, I see that in the, in the February 5th letter. Did they only correspond with you? Uh, I'm sorry, Congressman, are you, are you asking if they, Congress, if they corresponded with anyone else once, in my team? Once you gave the report to the White House, yes. they, tried to, they sought changes. I have one letter here that's addressed to you on February 5th. And they said, we're pleased that after more of a year of investigating, you've determined, you know, they, 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 they respond to the report. And then they, they ask, they, they disagree with your, uh, they ask for you to change some of the things you had in your report, namely the fact that the president's uh, memory was uh, not very good. You remember that? Yes, sir. Okay. But I also have two other letters, one on February 7th to Merrick Garland, where they raised the same concern, and then on February 12th, where they go to the DAG, Bradley Wein uh, Weinsheimer. You familiar with those? Uh, I am familiar with those letters. Bradley Weinsheimer is an assistant uh, or associate deputy attorney general. Right, associate DAG, the ADAG, right? Yes. And Mayor Garland, of course, is the attorney general. So yes, you're familiar with the fact that they went over your head? Um, they were certainly entitled to write whatever letters they wished to Mr. Weinsheimer and to the attorney general. I just wow. find that interesting. You know, the White House is, they're communicating with you throughout this one-year investigation, and then the White House says, "Oh, we're going to we're going to go to the we're going to go to the principal's office, and we're going to we're going to talk about Mr. Hur's report." Do you find that interesting? 
Uh, as I said, they, they were free to correspond with whomever in the federal government they wished to correspond with. Um, I, I did engage in numerous communications with them during the course of the uh, investigation. And as is reflected in the special counsel regulations, the attorney general did provide oversight of my investigation. I understand. Uh, I thank the gentlelady for yielding and uh, yield back. The chair now recognizes the gentleman from California for five minutes. Oh, boy. Thank you, Chairman Jordan. I want to first say that the House Judiciary Committee is responsible for helping to enforce the rule of law. Unfortunately, the actions of this chairman in ignoring a bipartisan congressional subpoena have damaged the ability of this committee to get information from witnesses and damage the rule of law. Now, Mr. Hur, thank you for being here today. Thank you for this sharing is your compelling immigrant Ted story. Ted Lieu from California. That just goes to highlight how America is a nation of immigrants. I'm going to ask you a series of questions, yes and no questions. They are not trick questions. They're simply designed to highlight what you already found in your report, which is that there are, quote, material distinctions, end quote, between President Biden's case and Mr. Trump's case. So here's my first question. In your investigation, did you find that President Biden directed his lawyer to lie to the FBI? We identified no such evidence. Did you find that President Biden directed his lawyer to destroy classified documents? No. Did you find that President Biden directed his personal assistant to move boxes of documents to hide them from the FBI? I, I can't stand these people. Okay, he, he's, he's asking questions about Trump's case and not talking about Biden anymore. This is, this is, this is what they do. Footage. No. Did you find that President Biden showed a classified map related to an ongoing military operation to a campaign aide who did not have clearance? No. Did you find that President Biden engaged in a conspiracy to obstruct justice? No. Did you find that President Biden engaged in a scheme to conceal? No. Each of the activities I just laid out describe what Donald Trump did in oh. his willful <laughs> mishandling of <laughs> information and his criminal efforts to deceive the FBI. Uh -huh. Yeah, this in is contrast, a joke. President Biden handed over Congress is a joke. Delay and complied fully with investigation. I don't care. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what, Mr. Lou. Here's what we'll do. You criminally charge Donald Trump already. You criminally charge Joe Biden or whatever. Don't care. I don't know why you're comparing the two. Did Joe Biden knowingly, willfully retain classified documents? Did he share them with third parties? And did he have a motive to do it? The answer to those questions is all yes. And Robert Hur has testified yes to all of that. And the only thing being questioned is whether or not Joe Biden is competent enough to stand trial. And because he is not competent, he will not face criminal charges as to whether or not Donald Trump is accused of any wrongdoing. By all means, bring it to court, prove he did it. Let the jury say what they want to say, and we'll, we'll play that game. But it's amazing to me that this is where we're at. This, this, so much of this hearing has been, but what about Trump? But Trump did this. I, 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 I think the most interesting thing element we have here is that perhaps Robert Hur is trying to insult Joe Biden's intelligence or something. I don't know. I just don't see it. I want to, I want you to take pay attention to one very important thing about Robert Hur's testimony right now. Ted Lieu says, did Biden lie, instruct his uh, lawyer to lie? Did he order to destroy evidence? All of these things. And to each of these, Robert Hur says, no, no, no. Now you take a look at when Republicans are asking Robert Hur about Joe Biden and whether or not he did bad things. He goes, uh, the report says yes. Uh, the report says no. He will distinctly and affirmatively answer of his own person, yes or no, when the questions are about something bad or insinuating something bad of Trump. Here, let's grab some more. Poor memory. Wasn't there a request by the White House to do that? There was a request, yes. And Mr. Chairman, I think the record should show that the gentleman from Maryland earlier said that that was not uh, that was not the case. I think he said, uh, nor did he seek to redact a single word of Hur's report. Obviously, Mr. Hur is telling us differently here. And didn't the White House then um, go to the Attorney General himself and say that he would like to see changes to the references in regards to the President's memory? The White House counsel did send such a letter. So if... Um, um, if this president was 60 years old rather than 80 years old, um, would you prosecute him? 
Congressman, as I've said before, I, I cannot engage in hypotheticals. I address the facts and the evidence as I found so them in there this There was matter. an 80-year-old grandma <laughs> that came to Washington, D.C. a few years ago, did not commit a violent crime, committed a crime, but did not commit a violent crime, and she was fully prosecuted. Doesn't that seem like it's a dual system of justice where the president is above the law? Wow. Congressman, I don't know the facts and the details of this other case that you're referencing with this other person. You say that um, the president is unlikely to reoffend in the future. I believe that was a quote that you put in the report. Is that correct? I believe that's in Chapter 13. How, how so? How is he unlikely to reoffend in the future? How, how, how do you come to that judgment? Uh, as, as I say on page 254, any deterrent effect of prosecution would likely be slight. We are not concerned with specific deterrence as we see little risk he will reoffend. Well, isn't it because he's now the president and he has almost unlimited authority to, um, uh, to release documents? Isn't that correct? I mean, as a vice president, he didn't have that authority. Now that he's president, isn't it easy to say that, that he's unlikely to reoffend because he's got almost unlimited authority to release these documents? Well, that, that statement was based on that assessment of the likeliness of reoffending from this particular person, President Biden, is based on a number of factors, including the authority that he has now with respect to classified materials, as well as the experience that he's had going through a special counsel investigation. Yeah, but look at back at 2011, there were multiple instances where he was informed by his staff and they ratcheted it up to where there was a formal process. You're saying he's learned from that when he's proven that he hasn't? I mean, that goes all the way back to 2011. Congressman, what I'm saying in the report at page 254 is that he's a repeat offender, Mr. Hurd, isn't he? <laughs> what I he's say, a repeat offender. To, I'll move on to something else here. <laughs> you said he had strong motivations to ignore the proper procedures for safeguarding classified information, and he provided raw material to his ghostwriter that would be of interest to prospective readers and buyers of his book. And I think you said something about he viewed himself as a historic figure. Correct? I believe those words do all appear in the report. Yeah, and he was wow. also doing this for business purposes, um, that there may be people that would want to buy his book. Towards the end of his vice presidency, Mr. Biden had resolved to write a book and began work on it uh, towards wow. the end of his vice presidency. You know, I think, Mr. Chairman, this is really consistent with the Biden family when you look at them in trying to enrich themselves. I mean, you're familiar with the work that the Oversight Committee has done over the last year, right? I have read some reports of it. I mean, 20 phone calls that were made to his son that he denied in 2019, 20 shell companies that were created, over $20 million. I mean, doesn't it appear there's a pattern here that where I come from, they almost call it money grubbing. Congressman, what I'm here to testify about today is the work that I conducted in this investigation and in this report. So I want to thank you for the work that you did as far as you could. But um, unfortunately, you are part of the Praetorian Guard that guards Ooh. the swamp out here in Washington, D.C., protecting the elites. And Joe Biden is part of that company of the elites. And you see it in um, the things that the Department of Justice has not acted on, Mr. Chairman. I mean, you look at the president's son, who does not have to answer for lying on his Form 4473, in regards to throwing a way a weapon, I want to I want to I want to stress this. I mean, I, I here we go with the Republicans now talking about Hunter Biden. And I can say it for both Democrats and Republicans. Look, let's talk about Joe Biden. This is the hearing about Joe Biden. Republicans want to come up here and say, you know, Hunter Biden's doing these things. I get it. I get it. They want to come and say Trump's doing these things. I get it. But listen to what was just testified to. Joe Biden views himself as a historical figure. Joe Biden knew that people would want to buy his book and he was resolved to to make this book. We know for a fact, based on Robert Hurst's testimony, it is factually stated in the report, Biden retained classified documents for the purpose of preserving his legacy, which include financial gain. He wanted to sell a book. OK, so what do you call it when someone in government takes classified information they do not have access, they don't have the authority to take because they want to make money? I don't know. And then shares it with someone who's not uh, uh, is, is not allowed access to that. I got to be honest. I don't think it's espionage, but there's something in there, some real criminal. And I don't see how right now the state of mind of Joe Biden plays a role in what he did seven years ago. That's the wild thing. 
So he does these things as he's leaving the White House in 2016, 2017. But because he's a bumbling, broken daughter today, you can't criminally charge him. Well, because we put him on the stand, the jury is going to say he's just a bumbling old fool. You could say the same thing of Donald Trump. Flex no findings of um, obstructive conduct on the part of. Let me ask you another question. President Trump has been indicted in the U.S. District Court of Southern Florida on 40 counts related to his possession of classified documents. Is that correct? I don't know the exact number of counts, but I know that an indictment is pending in that district. Mr. Herr, you even wrote that after being given a number of chances to return classified documents and avoid prosecution, Mr. I should say President Trump allegedly did oppose. And according to the indictment, he not only refused to return those documents over for many months, but he also obstructed justice by enlisting others to destroy evidence and lie about them. Okay, so these are all accusations, right? Against Donald Trump, he's being charged. The first thing I'll say is the president has what is described as plenary declassification powers. He is the president. He determines what is or is not classified. Some people want to argue this. By all means, take it up to the Supreme Court and we'll see what they have to say. My view is that uh, how could the president not have just the ability to take whatever he wants? It makes no sense. Joe Biden was the vice president. He does not have the authority to declassify documents. He is not the chief, uh, the commander in chief or the executive of this country. That is the big difference. My investigation. I would say, President Biden, you had his full cooperation in this investigation. The report includes cooperative steps that the president took. Matt Would Gates referred to this as the senile cooperation theory that Joe Biden cooperated, but he's just too senile to prosecute. I, I don't know who, who made this point. I don't think it was uh, was Gates. I think maybe this made it recently. If an old man who is well-meaning gets into his car and runs a child over We hold that person criminally responsible. And you can say he was an old man who who had bad memory and couldn't see very well. There was no intent to kill. That's right. However, there was intent to drive. There was impairment. And so we have a class of crimes for that. That could be negligent homicide. It could be manslaughter. In the instance of this case, I just I, I. I don't understand. Comment those that are watching live like. What do, you, what do you think this is about? Because we, we, they, they've said it now, what, three times? The report states Joe Biden wanted to sell a book, wanted to preserve his legacy, took the documents, held them in numerous locations. Some were a mistake, some were not. He shared the information with an individual who does not have clearance, and he told him, be careful, some of this may be classified. So we just say nothing? Two-tier justice system, I guess. Thank you very much for being here. Mr. Chairman, I yield. Gentleman yields back. Gentleman from Wisconsin is recognized. Attorney Herr, um, Webster's dictionary defines senile as exhibiting <laughs> a decline of cognitive ability, Let's such go. as memory associated with old age. Mr. Herr, based on your report, did you find that the president was senile? I did not. That, that conclusion does not appear in my report, Congressman. You see how he answers? Uh, you felt, though, that the president's memory or lack thereof was a critical reason to decline prosecution. The reason I'm asking this is whether you believe the president would be fit to stand trial, or do you think his lawyers would argue his incompetence to stand trial due to his state of mind? Uh, also, you know, was, was he in a, in a place to actually uh, be questioned? Congressman, my report, to the extent that it addresses um, the president's memory gaps that we identified and the evidence that we obtained during our investigation, they are addressed in the context of determining how the jury would perceive, receive, and consider evidence relating to um, whether or not the president had willful intent when it came to retaining or disclosing national defense information. Very good. I'd like to focus my questioning on Chapter 14 of your report. Uh, the classified documents found at the Penn Biden Center. Uh, You state in your report that the documents found at the Penn Biden Center were the most highly classified, sensitive, and compartmentalized materials recovered during your investigation. Is that correct? That is correct. Many of the documents came from Mr. Biden's West Wing office. That's also correct, isn't it? I believe that is reflected in the report. 
uh, do you, did you ask if he had packed the boxes himself? I believe that was one of the questions that we asked and that is reflected in the transcript now available to the committee. I think it's important. How would you characterize the packing of these boxes? Was it slow and meticulous, or were they packed in haste uh, without much scrutiny at all? I, I don't recall off the top of my head exactly how we characterize it, but I, I think the, the gist of the evidence is that um, the manner in which files were um, packed up and moved out at the end of the Obama administration was in, in a... Um, it was in some, something of a rushed manner. Very good. According to your report, the boxes were moved between multiple offices between Mr. Biden departing his West Wing office in January of 17 and his arrival at the Penn Biden Center's permanent offices in October of 17. Were any of these offices authorized to store classified information? No. When the boxes finally arrived at the Penn Biden Center's permanent offices, uh, how were they stored? I believe when the materials were recovered, uh, some of them were stored in a storage closet, um, and, and I believe others of them were in file cabinet drawers. So but what's I your assessment? I would refer you to the report. What's your assessment on security and access control measures at the? So I want to I want to address this because this is a little bit a little bit of a dry question, but he does bring up the Penn Biden Center, and here's what's fascinating: according to the House Oversight Committee, anonymous Chinese donations to U Penn potentially influenced Biden's administration policies. So there's concerns that, that this could be related to uh, foreign adversaries influencing Biden's operations, so or uh, at the very least, they could have gained access to this information. Five years later, uh, who, who discovered these boxes? It was Patrick Moore. Is that correct? Correct. One of the president's personal counsel. And did Mr. Moore have some type of active security clearance at the time? No. How about the executive assistant at the Penn Biden Center? No. On page 265 of your Actually, report. Actually, I'm sorry, Congressman, I may have misspoken there. I, I am not certain whether or not that executive assistant had an active security clearance at the time. Very good. On page 265 of your report, you stated, when interviewed by FBI agents, Moore believed the small closet was initially locked and that the Penn Biden Center staff member provided a key to unlock it. But his memory was fuzzy on that point. Uh, but an interview with Mr. Biden's executive assistant seemed to contradict his statement. Do you remember this exchange, and did, did in fact it contradict each other? Sir, you're, you're asking if I remember the exchange with um, Mr. Moore during our interview with him. Uh, right. Do you remember the, Do you remember them contradicting each other? I don't remember that contradiction specifically, but um, generally during the interview, sometimes we heard things from some witnesses that were in tension with what we heard from other witnesses, and we did our best to resolve those. Uh, co those conflicts. Just very quickly, in total, the National Archives discovered nine documents totaling 44 pages with classification markings. Is that correct? From the Penn Biden Center, yes. Uh, and you declined charges because, in, in summarizing your analysis, you couldn't prove beyond a reasonable doubt that retention of the documents was willful. Correct, sir. Very so good. this is actually interesting. Jonathan Turley, mentioning the uh, uh, previous testimony, her just contradicted the claims of Democratic members that Biden and the White House did not try to change his report or remove material. He confirmed the White House made multiple such objections to Attorney General Garland and did send such a letter seeking changes. On the first page and in the very first sentence of your report, which was, we conclude that no criminal charges are warranted in this matter. Did I read that accurately? You did, Congresswoman. Okay. Your report also says, in addition to this shortage of evidence, there are other innocent explanations for the documents we have not been, that we have not been able to refute. Did I read that correctly? Congresswoman, if you would give me a page citation, I can- Page six. Six. Yes, oh, okay. I see okay. that language on page six. Okay, thank you. Now, in addition to those conclusions, your report details several material distinctions, as you called them, between President Biden's actions and former President Trump's mishandling of classified materials. The facts are that President Biden cooperated with your investigation. Is that correct? Meaningless. He did. And his team notified authorities when they discovered classified documents and he turned them over immediately. Is that correct? Yes. Meaningless. He consented to multiple searches of his home and other properties. Is that correct? Correct. Meaningless. And he voluntarily sat for an interview with you. Is that If someone is accused of a crime and they decide to cooperate with police, we typically refer to that person as having a very bad lawyer. So in this regard, the fact that Joe Biden committed the crime willfully 
We know he did it. We know why he did it. We know what he sought to gain from it. It doesn't matter if afterwards he goes, you caught me. Tell me what you want to know. That's the argument they're making. Now, you note in your testimony that the specific comments you made about President Biden's memory have gotten a lot of attention. And as we've seen today, our Republican colleagues are again and again trying to weaponize those comments in a cheap attempt to score political points. But as someone who's participated in trials, you know that witnesses, regardless of age, often have difficulty recalling specific statements or facts when asked about them many years after, oh, here we go. Um, after those facts. So let's take a quick look at a differing witness experiencing a lapse in memory during a deposition. Your next wife was a woman by the name of Marla Maple. Right. And um, sitting here today, do you recall what years you were married to Ms. Maples? Um, I'd have to get the exact dates for you. I can do that. Am I correct that you married your cur current wife in January 2005? I don't know relative to that time. In what years were you the owner of the Pod Hotel? I don't know the years. James <laughs> Webb. I don't remember <laughs> the names. I don't remember the name. So you don't remember saying you have one of the best members? I, of the I don't remember that. <laughs> Trump, I know, I know, I innocent. Me, but, uh, I don't Trump, know that I Trump is too senile to stand trial. She proves it. Trump Thank you, Ms. Scanlon. I don't remember 35 times in his deposition for a lawsuit over Trump University. And in response to questions from she defending Trump, Robert Mueller, he answered, did not remember or could not recall 27 times. Now, uh, Mr. Ho, you've said today that DOJ process and regulations required you to assess whether a jury would find Mr. Biden to be a credible witness, correct? I'm not sure said, that I said those words exactly, um, but of course, <laughs> in my view, how a jury would perceive Mr. Biden if he elected to testify uh, in his own defense at a trial, that would be part of the whole ball of wax that jurors would consider. Yeah, the whole ball of wax. So let's break it down for you. If you put Joe Biden on trial in Washington, D.C., they would acquit him no matter what. And if you put Donald Trump on trial in a federal court, well, OK, maybe you'll win something in Florida. But uh, Democrats are going to vote to convict no matter what. An assessment of whether the jury would find Mr. Trump to be a credible witness. Uh, I don't I don't have any information relating to what how I'm not qualified basically to answer that question as to what went into Mr. Smith's decision making. But you are qualified to say what are the normal procedures followed by a special counsel, correct? I'm familiar she with the defending rules Trump? Forth the justice manual and my understanding of how to apply them. And in fact, what you did. Correct. OK, so I would suggest that we can all assume that the fact that Mr. Trump was charged with multiple counts of willfully concealing classified documents suggests that the special counsel in that case determined that Mr. Trump's denials are not credible. Um, at this point, I would ask unanimous consent to enter into the record an excerpt from the committee's transcri transcribed interview with Stephen D'Antonio, former assistant director in charge of the FBI Washington field office on July 7th, 2023, in which he explained the urgency for the FBI to retrieve and secure mm. classified documents from Donald Trump's estate because they contained national security information that should not be viewed by anyone without the proper security clearance. Even Mr. D'Antonio himself could not view Objection. the documents given their high security clearance, despite being the assistant director in charge of the FBI Washington field office. Thank you. Without I objection, yield back. General, General yields back. Gentleman from Oregon is recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I was quite interested in the dates that are set forth in your report, Mr. Hur. And uh, the reason I'm interested is because I keep getting confused between the 2017 date and the 2024 date. Good question. As to the condition of the of president's memory. Yes, here and we so go. Was there a difference? Because when I look at it, it seems like his memory was bad in 2000. 17, and then it was bad today. <laughs> There's never any distinction made, but isn't it true that if you were going to be looking at his, at, at prosecuting as you were, you would look carefully at his condition in 2017? Yes, the time of the isn't crime, the what was his mental because state? I think you say in your report that the most, uh, the, your best case, I think you call it out, um, the best case for charges would rely on Mr. Biden's possession of Afghanistan documents in his Virginia home in February 2017 when he was a private citizen and when he told his ghostwriter he just found classified material. That's the best case as you say it. Yes. And then you work your way through a series of, of defenses against your best case. So it was, you were looking at his condition in 2017. Do I have that right? 
You, you do, Congressman. And his memory was bad then. Uh, what's, and his, we can make, draw our conclusions whether it improved over the next six years or not. But I just want to make sure it's clear that we're looking at his condition in 2017, which you then find as you go through the def, kind of the, the list of defenses that is his memory is bad, his memory is bad, his memory is bad. There's about six or seven defenses here. And so what, what it gets me to is, is this question. Um, and, and I actually pulled this quote out of um, something I read this, this morning uh, that perhaps your report concluded, and perhaps it did not, that the president is, quote, incapable of being held accountable. Wow. But that's not quite what happened, is it? You didn't find that he was incapable of being held accountable, did you? I did not. Those did words not. do not appear in my report. They do not. But you reached a conclusion that you didn't have the evidence, but then your, your report continually recites these defenses. And I'm having a hard time putting the two together. If you didn't have the evidence, why do you persist in reciting these defenses? Congressman, I, I, I wrote my report as an explanation of my decision to decline charges as to President Biden. And the way that I came up with that explanation and wrote it in my report for the Attorney General is the following. The approach that I took was a prosecutor envisioning what would be the probable outcome of trial if we charged this case, if we presented the evidence to a jury, and not only the government presenting the evidence to a jury, but what would happen if the defense lawyers also got a chance to try to poke holes in the government's case at trial. And with respect to one of the several potential defenses that I lay out in the report, one of them does focus on the president's memory-related issues. That is a defense that the president's defense lawyers may well present at trial. And a jury is going to be confronted with at least three separate sets of evidence relating to the president's memory. One is from the recordings in 2016 and 2017 from the Ghost Rider. But if I may, forgive me for interrupting, but I'm, I'm limited on time as everybody else was. But you say, I think, that the evidence uh, suggests he is incapable of forming or you're incapable of proving uh, intent. It, there's kind of a bit of a difference there, uh, right? You, you may well have had the intent, but you could not, pr of, of, of uh, holding these, these documents, and I hate to say hiding the documents, but you can't, you couldn't prove it. So what you did instead is fell back to the various defenses that might also be asserted against you. Kind of a, a heap of rationale for not pursuing the president. Is that, is that, do I have it right now? Congressman, I think we're on the same page. I think what I'm trying to convey is that the way that prosecutors assess the strengths and weaknesses of their case is to think through, hey, in the government's case in chief, here's the evidence we're gonna, we're gonna present. And the jury might be with us. Maybe, maybe but, another, but that's another. not the end of the trial. The, trial the, the question here that was brought up right away. You are, you're correct, I'm a lawyer. I'm Joe Biden in 2017 was of sound mind, yes or no? So much as a determination that the evidence as you saw it would not overcome the defenses that you had identified, uh, plus uh, whatever lack of evidence you perceived. So it's not an exoneration, is it? The word exoneration does not appear anywhere in my report, and that is not my conclusion. The, the, other, the other thing that's of interest, that you, I think you were misquoted, um, you, you said something about, or someone, uh, I think it was Mr. Raskin, uh, suggested that you, um, well, I'm going to run out of time, but um, I, appreciate, I appreciate the work you do as a prosecutor, and uh, I yield back. Gentlemen, yields back. Mr. Herb, we've been at this uh, close to three hours. Uh, we, wow. we will, if, if you can hang with this, we'd like to keep going. There's a chance uh, we, we could complete votes by the time we, we have to go to votes on the House floor, which would be about 140. Um, I can keep going, Chairman. Okay, then we'll try to, we'll try to do that. There, there's a chance we may not, too, but I just wanted you to know the, the lay of the land. Now, yield to the gentleman from Colorado. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you, Mr. Herb, for your testimony and, and uh, for your service as a prosecutor at the Department of Justice. I want to focus a bit more on the progress of the investigation and kind of some process questions. So you were appointed by Attorney General Garland as special counsel to investigate the president's handling of classified documents in January of 2023, correct? Correct. And Attorney General Garland, of course, as you know, was nominated by President Biden to serve in his role. Correct. During your 15-month investigation, did the Attorney General attempt to interfere with your investigation? No. Did he impede your investigation in any way? No. Did any other member of the Department of Justice or within the administration uh, refuse to cooperate with your investigation? No. 
Uh, were you ever denied access to materials, witnesses, uh, resources from Attorney General Garland that you might have needed during the They're playing a game. No. They're playing a game right now where they're trying to compare and compass, uh, contrast this to Trump. But I'll say it again because it's been said a million times. Um, and I, I guess this is the takeaway as we're sitting through this. There's no reason for us to listen to a Democrat keep playing this game of did Joe Biden do what Donald Trump did? Because this is not the criteria for criminal charges. The criteria for criminal charges have been met. Joe Biden did retain the documents. Joe Biden transmitted the documents, which I believe is a separate crime. Joe Biden had intent and motive to do so. The question is, is he of sound mind? And the conclusion was that he couldn't prove intent because Joe Biden's memory was bad. And his conclusion is that in 2017, it was as bad as it is today. That's up for a jury to decide. Joe Biden today versus Joe Biden seven years ago. I think it's a ridiculous proposal. And I think a probable cause has been met. And now it should go to a jury to decide. I believe that uh, uh, Robert Hur is lying when he says that they could not make a conclusion beyond a reasonable doubt. Because in this hearing already, I, 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 think, it's, I think it's been heard. The issue at hand is this. Neither Donald Trump nor Joe Biden for, should be charged for this. You can make an argument about a slap on the wrist, but here's the problem. They need something to go after Donald Trump. That's why Democrats keep saying over and over again, did Joe Biden do what Trump did? The things they're claiming that Trump did are accusations that have not been proven. This is the game they're playing. They wanted to go after Trump. They stretched the law as far as they could to try and get Trump on something because they want to disqualify him. And because of this, they accidentally swept up Joe Biden. Now they're coming up with reasons as to why Joe Biden is exempt from this as a doddering old fool and Trump should be found guilty. That's right. It's 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 a two tier system of justice. Any way you look at it. And I'll tell you what I think about, uh, you know, I'm not I'm not going to go through all of the testimony here, actually. I'll give you some final thoughts as we start to wind things down on this uh, extended stream. Ah, breaking news. It's a bit of a wild day. Didn't have a 10 a.m. segment. But I think Robert Hur is appointed because he is a warm milk Republican, because he is a plain yogurt Republican. You see, Republicans are centrist, as I've stated many times in the past week or so. Here's Robert Hur, a registered Republican, who's going to go, well, you know, the right thing to do for this country. And so what the Democrats say is, look, we had a Republican investigate Joe Biden. And even he concluded that Joe Biden didn't do anything wrong. He said insufficient evidence. Right. They could have gotten, um, I mean, imagine if, I don't know, insert anyone. Let's say they, they, they got the guys over at Judicial Watch to handle this. Let's say they got any one of these lawyers that we reference, Jonathan Turley, to do the investigation. Yeah, Joe Biden would be in criminal, uh, would be facing criminal charges. That's the reality. You know, I, I can't say I know for sure, though. I, I should I should walk that back a little bit. The issue with Republicans is that they're centrists, is that we can all sit here and we can say that we know Joe Biden did commit this crime. And I think there should be accountability regardless of what form it takes. Maybe you want to argue that he's a doddering old fool who can't remember. And OK, if that's the case, then what we do is we say some kind of criminal negligence and not uh, uh, willful retention, whatever you want to call it, but criminal charges nonetheless. Instead, we are in this country. You have a left and you have a center and that's it. Now, don't get me wrong. There is an element of the far right and the fringe right. They exist but they're microscopic and they hold no institutional power. You take a look at what Democrats are willing to do. Donald Trump should be brought up on charges in every possible jurisdiction. Donald Trump should be falsely accused of impropriety and sexual assault. Then when the court actually ruled in New York that Trump was not liable for rape, the media will say it anyway. And they do over and over again ad nauseum. And Republicans go, well, hold on, you know, let's let's go for the middle ground here. Let's be reasonable. OK, here's what needs to happen. The only way this changes is if Republicans actually go on the offensive. I don't think they will. The deep state, the uniparty, the establishment, whatever, they tolerate the milk toast Republicans who argue for the middle ground. You know, some people would, would ask, you know, how come how come you're not getting banned, Tim? How come? You, well, we do get shadow banned on YouTube for sure. YouTube's not nearly the worst. TikTok is. Um, but we'll see. Because we're now entering this territory that uh, I've, I've talked about quite a bit. The right needs to actually start asserting a right wing position and not a centrist position. 
That's the reality. Uh, the example I give is uh, paid speech. How about this? How about the right actually start arguing for blasphemy laws on X? Elon Musk should ban anyone who blasphemes the name of Abrahamic God. So that would protect Muslims, Jews, and Christians and all denominations. Why not? Because conservatives keep arguing for free speech while Democrats keep arguing for blasphemy laws, which means the end result is going to be a moderation between slight blasphemy laws and free speech or, or and neutrality. I shouldn't say free speech, neutrality. The right wing position on misgendering. X should ban anyone who uses a pronoun that does not align with a person's biological sex. That's the right wing position. They don't argue for it. They argue for the middle of the road. They say, no, 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 just don't ban anybody. Then the left says, OK, we'll ban anybody who misgenders us. What do you get? Middle of the road approach. Elon Musk entertains a misgendering policy. He allows it on his platform, but he says, don't worry, it'll only apply to Brazil. How about we demand a right wing response? And maybe then we'll get the middle of the road. See, what I truly think should happen is you should be allowed to speak. Shane Cashman, when I'm on uh, IRL last night, made a really great point. He said, if all of this murder and violence and adult content can appear on X, why can't we say our political opinions? You're allowed to look at a video of, of hardcore adult content on X, but you can't say something like, I personally find this political idea bad. They'll ban you for it. This is the problem. Right now, X has a misgendering policy. Elon Musk said he opposes it, but there it is, plain as day, just sitting there. Where is the where is the gendering policy? Where is the you will be banned if you use preferred pronouns? Why not? No one's arguing for it. No one's threatening to pull ads. No one's canceling their memberships. The left will do everything in their power to force the issue. And the right will keep saying, let's stay in the middle of the road because Republicans in this country are centrists. And I, I, I can't explain it better than that. The left will argue they're not. They'll say, no, you're far right. We're centrists, but they're far left in terms of what the right actually believes. They don't they don't argue for their own beliefs. In terms of what the left believes, they argue for all of it. And so here we are. Suppose we can get a little bit more of the hearing in to a jury in a criminal trial if charges were brought. And I guess I'm asking specifically, I know you cite in the report the, the dates that he couldn't remember when he was vice president, when he began, when his term ended. You cite that in the report. Is there anything else specifically that stands out from that interview with the president? A number of things stand out. Um, and again, I, I'm aware that the transcript has now been made available. Um, I, I do provide certain examples in my report of uh, significant, personally painful experiences um, about which the president was unable to, to recall certain information. Um, I also took into account the president's overall demeanor in um, interacting with me during the five plus hour voluntary interview. So it was a, a wealth of details about being there in the moment with the president, uh, including his inability to recall certain things. And I'll also say, as reflected in the transcript, um, the fact that he was prompted on numerous occasions by the members of the White House Council. I read that. Office. What the brief, the brief look I had at the transcript this morning, because we just got it this morning, I, I, I saw some of that. Chair, now recognize the gentlelady from uh, uh, Texas, or excuse me, Pennsylvania. I'm used to you being down there. The I, gentlelady from Pennsylvania. I got an upgrade. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Mr. Hart. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, thank you, Mr. Hart, for your service to our country, for your team's service in this uh, investigation. You determined, uh, after what you described as rigorous, detailed, and thorough analysis, that President Biden should not be prosecuted for blah, mishandling blah, blah. classified documents. In fact, everybody can take a look at your report. The very first sentence says as much. It says, quote, we conclude that no criminal charges are warranted in this matter. Am I correct? Yes. That's the bottom line of this report. Am I correct? That is the first sentence. It's the first sentence and the bottom line. Uh, there's an awful lot of misinformation uh, that has been put forward uh, by the press in some cases and also by the other side of this dais. Uh, you didn't reach this decision because President Biden was sympathetic. Is that correct? Uh, I reached the decision based on the totality of the reasons that I set forth at length in my report. Based on the evidence. And uh, while Mr. Trump, who is being prosecuted, is not sympathetic. You didn't calibrate any of that in there. Sympathetic, not sympathetic. Doesn't matter. It's the evidence, right? Congresswoman, I did not reach any assessments of the evidence in the Trump matter. 
um, to the extent that I considered the allegations against former President Trump, it was for purposes of comparing I, I relevant trust precedents. That with your credibility, you were not out to get Mr. Trump nor here to help Mr. Biden. Uh, I think it's about the evidence, and I think you say that over and over again in your report. Uh, why did you decide President Biden should not be prosecuted? Your, your report tells us, quote, we conclude the evidence is not sufficient to convict. Those are your words, is that correct? Uh, I believe if those exact words do not appear in the report, that is consistent with the gist of my conclusion. Very good, they are the, your exact words. Uh, that was not the case with Donald Trump. You have a copy of your report today, don't you, in front of you? I Could do. you read a portion of it for me? Uh, your words, it is page 11, starting on line three, beginning with the words. Unlike the evidence involving Mr. Biden, would you read the next few sentences? Unlike the evidence involving Mr. Biden, the allegations set forth in the indictment of Mr. Trump, if proven, would present serious aggravating facts. Keep going. Congresswoman, I'm happy to have you read the words in my report. Well, it's your report, so I think it actually is more fitting that you read those. Most notably, oh, what a grand after waste being of given time. multiple chances to return classified documents and avoid prosecution, Mr. Trump allegedly did the opposite. Keep going. According to the indictment, he not only refused to return the documents for many months, but he also obstructed justice by enlisting others to destroy evidence and then to lie about it. You may stop there. Now, my question is, uh, did Robert, was Robert Hur an investigator in the uh, Trump case? Uh, honest question. I, I'm, I'm not familiar. Or is he the special counsel investigating Joe Biden's crimes? It's, it's, it's theater. It's all fake and we all know it. I feel like the internet was an accident. It was not supposed to give you a view. It was not supposed to give me a platform. I mean, I can think about it a million ways. You take a look at some of the people who have uh, risen to prominence in political commentary, in sports or otherwise, and they don't fit that traditional mold of how the machine operated. They certainly don't. Now, here we are playing this game once again, but I feel like something is going to burst. I, I, this, I, I don't see this being sustainable for, for us or for anyone else in that we're watching in real time. We know the, the games and the lies. Imagine what it must have been like a hundred years ago as radio. But for the most part, they'd go to Congress and no one would have any idea what happened. And then uh, after the session, some reporter would run out and write down in a newspaper what they thought happened. And uh, sure enough, you'd have Democrats and Republicans. They'd be like, ah, that's not what happened. That's what the American people thought what happened. Radio, of course, changed things. Television changed things. But now we have the Internet. Where And in real time, we are watching all of this theater, lies, manipulations. I don't know what the point is in talking about Joe Biden and these classified documents. Matt Gates, I think, was right. Neither Trump nor uh, Biden should be charged for this. It's ridiculous. These are slap, slap on the wrists. That's it. It's a, what are you doing with these documents? Get out of here. You take them back, whatever, eh, whatever. No big deal. Well, who cares? Civil, civil penalties? a lawsuit, a slap on the wrist. Yet here we are. And you get people like uh, Jimmy Kimmel and Colbert, and they scream Donald Trump is the apocalypse while the country is, is, is rotting from the inside out. I don't know. I don't know why this matters. It's, it's, it's politicking, I guess. Republicans are going to bank on this. This is great for Republicans. Why? Because they got you and I riled up over a two-tiered justice system. And they want us to spread that message. That's why they don't want to actually charge Joe Biden. That's why they don't want to actually impeach him. They want us to get angry and demand accountability so that we're riled up, furious, and we all go vote. Well, good job, I guess. That is exactly what people should be doing right now. I'm going to wind things down from here. This is a special live show for a variety of reasons. For those that have been following me on Twitter, and uh, for those who are wondering why there was no 10 a.m. segment, last night after Timcast IRL, we got word that uh, Mr. Bocus, he is our cat, was probably on the way out. And so we, uh, you know, I went downstairs after the show and uh, hung out with him for a little bit. And it was clear that he was, he could barely stand, he could barely move. And this morning, when I came in at my normal time, Mr. Bocus was unable to move completely. And uh, he's, of course, uh, our cat. We have a coffee uh, at, at Casper.com. The pumpkin spice Mr. Bo Mr. Bocus blend will be discontinued after uh, 
after the final run. So whatever's left will be the last of it. And if you want to have that bag, uh, the only chance is to get it now. And it was made in a simpler time. We were planning all of this when uh, Mr. Bocus was fat and happy. But in December of last year, we got word that his kidneys were failing. We extended his life as long as we could. Uh, this morning at about 8, 820 or so, we went outside and we laid Mr. Bocus in the grass by the chickens so they could watch the birds and the chickens one last time. He immediately started sniffing, though he couldn't move and twitching his feet. He was trying. And uh, hopefully that was the way to do it. I had a million and one people saying, just bring him into the vet and give him the injection. And I, I said, no, we will bring him outside. He, he stopped eating. He couldn't eat. And it was quick. It, it was it was a day. One day he was eating. Two weeks ago, he was here in the show and he was jumping up and down. And then uh, seemingly overnight, his kidneys shut off and he wouldn't eat food. He wouldn't take anything. He was struggling to drink water and he was just mumbling. So we brought him outside and uh, I, I, I felt that it was not appropriate to bring him to the vet just to give him an injection. The last experience of his life would be a cold, sterile, sterile environment where he is confused and scared. But I thought the best thing to do would be to lay him in the grass in front of Chicken City so he can watch the chickens so he, he so longed for in his younger days. And, uh, and that's how he would go. We, uh, we brought him outside and it took about an hour. And at uh, 9.48 a.m., he gave his last breath and his heart stopped beating. And that was it. It was pretty brutal. And so I decided, you know, as I was sitting outside, uh, I care uh, substantially less about missing one morning news segment and uh, would rather be out there with, with Mr. Bocus. I believe he may have been just shy of six years old. He had underdeveloped kidneys, so his adult cat body could not handle the... Uh, the, the, the kidneys were basically working at like 130 percent. You know what I mean? Like I, I probably that's probably inaccurate. But like if if typically your kidneys are, are functioning at like a certain degree of their threshold, imagine, you know, Mr. Bocus was carrying the heaviest weights imaginable every day. It's going to wear you down. You're going to break. And that's what happened. Uh, unfortunately, because of his uh, he also had uh, an enlarged heart with a with a valve issue there was very little we could do. Like they, they were saying like weekly blood transfusions to keep him alive, but then his heart's going to give out. And so it, was, it is what it is. Uh, about one one hour and 20 minutes laying in the grass and then he he stopped breathing. You know what I figured was, you know, everyone said, bring him to the vet. I'm like, we're going to drive 40 minutes to the vet. We're going to bring him in. He's going to be crying and groaning, confused and scared. And then they're going to inject him and he's going to be miserable. But I figured if we laid him in the grass, in the sunshine, the reality is that, uh, he, he would suffer a lot less as the, you know, it's, it's cool ground. He, he wouldn't, he wouldn't last very long. And, uh, and I was correct. So missed that morning segment. And I think I'm going to call it here because we're going to go have the, the burial for Mr. Bocus. He is, he is, but a cat, but he is still family and he's family for all the, uh, all the Timcast members. And a shout out to all the people who these grumbling, just, uh, uh, you know, just these people who are on Twitter, like grow up, it's a cat, your cat died. And I'm like, you know, I feel like those are the people that want to live in the machine world, they, that they want to be part of the machine. They want to be the Terminator. What makes us human and what makes the human experience is the feelings that we have along the way. And I don't know what would be more important or what I would do any of all, you know, what, what is the point of all of this work, but to be loyal to those who are loyal to me and to, uh, you know, honor those who have who have honored us. So the words of some stranger on the internet complaining that I'm caring more for a cat or something like that is is absolutely meaningless to me for if I don't uh, honor those who have uh, been here for me in my life, be it the lowliest of creatures, just a humble cat who pissed all over my floor incessantly, then I don't know what I'm doing any of this for because I might as well just go out and live in a van down by the river. But no, we... Uh, that's what we're going to do. We will be back tonight for Timcast IRL, but I think I'm going to wrap it up there and we're going to go. Um, we're thinking Viking funeral at Fridamistan. Make a little boat with a little pyre on it and anchor it in the center of a pond. We have a pond there. It's very safe. And then just maybe a Viking funeral of some sort. I don't know if we're allowed to do that. Uh, otherwise, we'll just bury him and give him a little tombstone, which may be the appropriate thing. But uh, that was it. We didn't know what was going to happen. But, uh, you know, I think... I think that uh, in the end, Mr. Bocus was about to go and, and he waited for me to get here in the morning. And so I gave him that. I'm going to wrap it up. I will see you all tonight at 8 p.m. over on Timcast IRL. Thanks for hanging out.